Hi everyone, hope you guys are all doing well. Just wanted to do a video discussing the Fed's decision to not begin tapering its quantitative easing program. And this will be a follow-up to the one that I put out on Sunday. But basically, I just wanted to discuss why I think the Fed decided not to taper. Uh, because I've seen quite a bit of videos discussing the reduction in the mortgage market and also to the import-export situation of the U.S. Uh, some videos are pointing to those uh, two reasons as being the primary catalyst for the Fed decision. Uh, my position is that it has more to do with interest rates and more importantly the extent that those interest rates have on uh, servicing the U.S. debt which of course has grown uh, quite substantially since 2008. But looking at this Market Watch article, I think that this quote from a U.S. economist pretty much hits the nail on the head. Uh, he goes on to state, Clearly the Fed has been spooked by the extent of the surge in long-term interest rates over the past couple of months. And I think that that's exactly right. If we look at the yield on the 10-year Treasury note, if we look at this max timeline chart, you can't really make out any substantial uh, surge upwards in the yield on the 10-year note, at least as it goes uh, towards you know, the yields that were seen in the 1980s and 1990s. However, if we pull back and look at a six-month timeline, uh, there's a clear indication that there has been a surge recently, at least in yields on this 10-year note. But again, too, at the beginning of May, yields were at 1.63%, and by the middle of September of this year, they had gone up pretty much to touch the 3% yield. So again, we've almost seen a doubling of interest rates in the last couple of months. And again, to this surge upwards, it's not like it didn't have any consequences. Again, too, looking at this Market Watch article, we see that since the end of May, there's been a $100 billion sell off in bond funds. And again, to that sell off, a lot of it comes from central foreign banks. Now, it should be pretty clear why these central foreign banks are selling. But again, too, to understand why, uh, all we have to do is look at how bonds work. Uh, in case you don't know, bond yields move inversely to the price of the underlying bond. Uh, for example, if you're sitting on a bond, let's say you bought it for $100, and it yields 2%. Now, a month later, if bonds start yielding 3%, again, too, nobody's going to pay you $100 for that 2% yielding bond. Uh, they may pay you 95 or they may pay you 92 but the value of the bond itself is going to move downwards. So central foreign banks, they're realizing that bonds are moving upwards, and they're anticipating the end of QE. So again, not only are they not going to be buying right now, they're going to become net sellers, uh, because they think that yields going up, that's going to cause the underlying value of their bonds to go down. And again, why would they wait around if they think that yields are going to be going up? Uh, why wait around for their bonds to decrease in value? Value. So basically, from there, we have a situation where there's a decrease in the demand for bonds from central foreign banks, as well as a decrease in demand from the Fed itself, as they're supposedly going to be uh, ending, ending their QE program. So those two situations working in, ten in tandem, again, a decrease in demand from the Fed and from central foreign banks, that's going to be causing interest rates to spike even more. Again, two interest rates have to go up. The yield on these bonds need to go up in order to incentivize an increase in demand from central foreign banks. But of course, as this happens, uh, that is, as interest rates spike to try to incentivize demand, uh, servicing the debt becomes much more difficult since having to pay interest on the debt will take up a greater and greater portion of the budget. So the Federal Reserve can't let this happen. They can't let interest rates start spiraling upwards out of control. Uh, so what they achieve by not tapering is first, they ensure that demand is artificially high for bonds through their own QE purchases. And of course, this artificial demand artificially suppresses interest rates lower. But secondly, and more importantly in my opinion, is they, set, they signal to central foreign banks that QE isn't ending anytime soon, uh, which of course gives no expectation that interest rates should rise in the future. And again, 
this uh, having no expectations that rates will rise that incentivizes them to at least not sell their bonds and maybe even to buy more bonds at lower yield. Again too if they're not expecting rates to rise then they don't have to worry about the underlying price of their bonds that they're holding is going to start going lower and lower. And again all of this of course artificially suppresses interest rates lower. And now if we go look at the consequences of the Federal Reserve's decision, looking at this article that came out on Thursday, the day after the decision, again to what's in the headlines, again we see that there's been a surge in the U.S. bond market. So there's been an increased demand in bonds, and if we go back to the yield on these 10-year Treasury notes, pulling back and looking at the five-day chart, we can see on Wednesday that the yield on these bonds were pretty much almost at 2.9% at one point and after the Fed's decision we see that yields fall off a cliff and head towards pretty much 2.7%. So again a huge decrease in the yield that they're going to have to pay on these bonds. So that's my argument. I think that interest rates and the overall servicing of the debt was a huge part in the Fed's decision not to taper. And while I think that the reduction in the mortgage market and the import-export situation has a little bit to do with their decision. I think that those are secondary to this overall position on interest rates. So again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I understand that these videos definitely aren't as exciting as the coin roll hunting and the silver videos. Uh, but again, as I've mentioned in past videos, from 2007 to 2010, I basically couldn't stop uh, watching all the economic information unfolding. So this type of stuff really interests me, and I hope it interests you guys as well. But that said, I do have quite a bit of videos planned on silver in particular over the next couple of days. I'm going to be doing a video discussing why even your small uh, silver stack is relevant. Again, too, I have a small silver stack, so I've just been looking around and trying to get information uh, generally on the silver market. And also, too, it's taken me one and a half years to build up the courage to make this video, but I'm also going to be discussing how to make money, or at least my plans for how to make money uh, through coin roll hunting, particularly through copper pennies. And again, too, I've never wanted to focus on the money-making aspect of coin roll hunting, but I have gotten quite a bit of private messages and just overall comments on videos, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that in the video as well. But thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, let me know what your opinion is in the comment section below. Also, too, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, again, too, that's always greatly appreciated. But thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you watching, and I hope that you have a great day, a great weekend, and I'll see you next video. Bye for now.